Good morning, good morning. Anyway, my name, I'm gonna try this again. Let me check the orientation this time of the video. Um, my name is Colleen Light, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I actually come to you from Kalama, Washington, which is a small town in Southwest Washington State. So I have not been live in, oh, weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I had to have a few things medically done, and anywho, that's another long story. Not all that exciting, but I'm so, so happy to be back with you. So trying to bring you up on my laptop here. But while I'm doing that, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. We are going to make a super cute card that showcases this absolutely fabulous, bright and beautiful 6x6 six six designer series paper. And you can find that in our new annual catalog. So that is very exciting. Um, let's see what else. What else do I have while I play around? Oh, I think I'm in the right orientation. Oh, good morning, Tammy. Um, so this bright, beautiful designer series paper, let me show you some of this. I pulled some out um, and it is absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorites. And then I'll tell you a little bit about the stamp set and the punch. So this um, particular six by six designer series paper, um, it's just a full package here. It comes with 48 um, pieces of paper. I think it's good for just about everything. I mean, as we go into the 4th of July, birthdays, graduation. So this is one side here. Look at all of these. And then the other side. It, there's just so much to play around with here. I absolutely love the colors. It uses some of our classics. It uses some of the new stuff. Um, so... You can mix and match all you want. As you, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know my first card is going to be somewhat of a case from the catalog. I changed up the colors. I will have this one blogged for you um, by the end of the week. Um, but look at how cute this is. This is actually the one in the catalog. So I more or less took the design and made it my own, did a little coloring. But look at this on the inside. You just add a happy birthday. And this card took me, I'm telling you, maybe, maybe five minutes. Super easy to make. I think the hard, the longest part was maybe doing a little bit of paper piecing here. And I'll show you how to do that today. So then I made another card using the designer series paper cut into the four squares. I'm sorry, it's a little dark. You know, I tell you, it has been nothing but sunshine here in Southwest Washington until I go to do a live and then poof, the clouds come. Anyway, you can see that I made this super, super cute layout. I think this is called the Stack and Shuffle. Again, I will have this one blog for you during the week. Super cute, super easy, it takes almost no time at all. And down here, I kind of wish maybe I had put that cupcake a little bit lower, but I'm okay with it. Put the little cupcake again, a little paper piercing, piecing, which I will show you how to do. But let's get on with today's card. Going to change the layout just a little because, you know, can't make the same card twice, can you? <laughs> well, maybe some people can. I struggle. And we're going to be using the Circle Sayings Bundle. Comes with this 2 and 3 eighth circle punch. Who doesn't love a circle punch, right? And the circle sayings, again, fun stamp set, great sentiments, easy to use, easy to make fun cards. Oh, good morning, Joan. Um, you know, wonderful, wonderful stamp set. Um, you'll be seeing this probably with me throughout the year, but let's go ahead and get started today. I had, well, I have all the measurements. I had all the measurements just written down here right in front of me, and then you know what I do. I move, and then that's that. Okay, so for our card base, this is your standard card base here. You know, I should probably tape this around down, this little piece here before it makes you all dizzy. Um, or, you know, let's just move it out of the way. I don't think I need it. We don't need to make anyone get motion sick during videos. So anyway, standard card base, five and a half inches by eight and a half. We scored at four and a quarter. So, oh, look, I got a little smudge there. That's okay. 
Um, let's see if I can get that off. You know, I have the dog in here with me, so I'm petting her at the same time, which you should probably not do when you're making cards when your lab comes in from outside. Anyway, we'll just pretend that didn't happen, huh? So I like to fold, you know, there's a valley side of your card and the mountain. And the mountain is where that little ridge is, the bump. So I like to fold in towards the mountain part and have the valley on the outside. So I usually give just a little bend that way and then in towards the center. And I find that my cards lay flatter and they seem to um, crease a little bit easier. Of course, this is what works for me. You should always do what works for you. This is one of the new colors and this is, you know, this is what happens when you take a month off. You can't remember anything. Azor Afternoon. What a fun color. So because this one, I used the Fresh Freesia and it was more, more designed towards, you know, maybe a girl, woman. Um, I thought, well, let's just try this brighter blue. And I've been wanting to use this color. It's a bright blue, so I absolutely love it. This is cut at four inches by five and a quarter. So it'll lay on our card like this. Now, here is this fun designer series paper. Whereas I used four on this one, we're using three on this one because, you know, you gotta swap it up a little bit. And I just took out the patterns that I liked. The best thing about these cards is, number one, you can use any designer series paper you have in your stash. These are quick and easy cards. You can make them in multiples and any designer series paper you have in your stash will work for you. So let's put this part together. We'll do our stamping and I'll show you how to do the paper piecing. Okay, so this designer series paper is one and three quarters by five. And I'm going to want that right here on the left side of my cardstock. Now you could, I mean, do it how you like. If you want the longer piece on the right side, put it over there. My brain seems to work left to right, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I want the little piece up here, and this little piece measures one, one and seven eighths of an inch by one and seven eighths. And then I want my little oops, celebratory swirly things down here. One and seven eighths of an inch by three. So all of this will be blogged. Don't worry about writing it down. I'll have all of this blogged by noon or so for you. Kind of give it a quick eyeball, see how you want to lay it out, grab your glue, cross your fingers, and hopefully you'll get it in the right place. <laughs> That's what I did yesterday. It was just like, oh, please let it get in the right place. I don't want to have to redo it. Anywho, um, so for those of you who don't follow Stampin' Up! on the regular, and if you happen to be catching the replay, and you are wanting to place an order, let me just tell you, Stampin' Up! has a great joining special. Now, of course, I'd love to have you as a part of my team, um, but even, even if you want to join somebody else's team, that's fine. Just take advantage of that joining special. Right now, they're offering $155 worth of merchandise for $99, so you get a lot free. Um, and, you know, we all like to save our money, right? So if you're interested, it's easy to join. No selling is required. Um, just get your discount, enjoy your products. If you wanna sell, let me know and I will help you in any way that I can. Um, okay, but even if you don't wanna sell, I'll still help you <laughs> in any way that I can. My goodness, that was a convoluted way to say all that, wasn't it? Okay, so let's put this one on here. The other thing, while we're busy just gluing, my first class is here in Woodland, Washington on June 21st at 10 a.m. So if you'd like the details on that, let me know. Happy to do it. You know, I kind of think I want it to go this way. All right, so look at your designer series paper before you lay it down. Kind of see the direction you want it to go. And make sure, really the important thing is just to make sure your borders are even. We're going to put a sentiment here in the middle. So if everything's not lining up absolutely perfect here, don't worry about it. We're going to be covering that up. Try and get your borders as even as possible, though. There we go. Easy peasy. Now for the fun part, the stamping part. That is always my favorite part. This is how I keep my scraps. I'm going to grab a piece of white um, and, and I just like literally in, in any freezer bag you have and I put them in a file um, just in a bin and that's how I file them 
Nothing fancy here, folks. Um, let's go ahead and grab our memento ink. And um, no, let's not. Let's do the Azor Afternoon first. And I want to grab this Celebrate. Normally, I like to kind of do things in advance, but I want to really show you with these. So when you pick up stamps like this, sometimes they can stick to the base. So I want you to take your finger and kind of loosen it as you go along. Stamps will rarely tear. They will rarely break apart, but especially if they're new or you haven't used them in a while. So kind of loosen them up and take your fingers and go around. Um, it will keep them more in shape and you run you don't run a high risk then of tearing them. Also, when you have a circle or anything that maintains a shape, flop it down. Don't, don't put it on your block. Just kind of toss it down there. Let it retain its shape. Here, I'm going to just flip it around though so it's at the top. And then put your block on top of it. Nobody likes a wonky sentiment. <laughs> you know, well, I don't think other people generally notice, but when you're crafting and you're spending your time, you don't necessarily want, oh, hi, Tan. You don't necessarily want a wonky sentiment. You certainly don't want to tear your stamps. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I am going to, I haven't used my Azure, what is it, Azure Afternoon yet. So I'm super excited to give this a whirl. Let me just give it a little stamp off. Yep, see, I'm glad I did that because somehow or another I got a double, I don't know what happened there. It looks like raindrops. Let's see. Okay, that's much better. Must have been user error. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead, put our celebrate right there. Hold it for a second. Ta-da. I'm going to move that out of my way. Now, let's get our cupcake here. Now... I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to show you actually, in the catalog, you can, oh sorry, you can see they did not do anything here fancy with this cupcake. You don't have to do anything fancy with it. It's not a rule, but it just looked too blase for me. Um, so I had, I felt the need to fancy it up. So I not only want to stamp my cupcake there, I'm going to grab just a scrap of this gorgeous designer series paper I was using. Let me see here if this will work. Um, I have some left over, and it will. Okay, so grab a scrap. You don't, you know, you don't need to use a whole sheet for this, and I'm going to show you why. So I am going to start just with my Tuxedo Memento Black, and I'm going to, let me see here. I think I'm up too high. There we go. Um, I'm going to pop this right in the middle there. Celebrate. And then I'm going to take this, I don't know why I want to keep, I'm out of practice. And I am going to, because I want most of that blue in there, I think. I want, I'm going to stamp this. I'm going to set that off to the side real quick. So paper, paper piecing is fun. <laughs> it is one of my favorite ways to dress things up. So this is not really fussy cutting. It's just more following the lines. That's really all it is. We're just going to follow the lines. And I only want the bottom part of my cupcake here. I want the cupcake liner. So you can be as fancy. I'm just going to go around that because I want to cut everything else out before I do the the top part. Um, and I am getting, whereas when we fussy cut, we tend to leave a little white space around. I'm not doing that. I am trying to get as close to that black line and doing a little wiggle, just barely a little bit around there, just to make it look a little bit more natural. But I want to get as close to that black line as I can. Okay, so you know, we're never going to get all of these little cupcake things a hundred percent so we are going i'm just going to take my scissors i'm saying we because i actually have the dog in here and i don't know why i'm talking in the plural but anyway she's in here so when i'm saying we <laughs> um anywho so you you want to get as close to that black line as possible but it really we're going to be laying this on our stamped image 
So it's not all that important. There we go. Okay, let's do a little bit of coloring now. Coloring is so much fun. So I'm gonna grab back this scrap of paper that I have used a bunch and I'm gonna grab that. And I really liked, so this is one of our new colors, this light pecan pie. And I'm going to use this because I am a chocolate ice cream and chocolate cake fan. So I'm just gonna take this and just lightly color in the cake portion. You can see nothing, nothing too fancy. I just think that this added just a little bit extra to the front of the card and I thought it added a little bit more wow. Um, you know, for a simple card, because it is a very, very simple card. And then I'm using the Lemon Lolly, Light Lemon Lolly. Um, I didn't really have anything that I thought would work well, and I just really love this Lemon Lolly color. But I love anything yellow, so any new yellow Stampin' Up! comes out with, I will use as much as I can. <laughs> Okay, so easy peasy there, right? Okay, now for the paper piecing part. Here's our cut image. We're just going to adhere there, here this right there, and it's going to look like a, hang on a second. Um, it's going to look like a cupcake liner. And it just adds that little bit of extra that we all like to add to our cards. Okay, so I'll hold this up for you here in a second. But see, can you see just how cute that looks? Just like a little birthday cupcake liner. Now we're gonna take our, our punch here, line it up as best as I can. That looks pretty good. At least it looks good enough for me. Um, let me see here. Okay, everyone, keep your fingers crossed. Ta-da! Okay, so my punch, for whatever reason, is just leaving the slightest hint of a ridge right on this aspect. Not enough for me to worry about or to call Stampin' Up! about. Really, that was all the fix I needed there. Let's put our card together. And, see, so this is going to sit like this. Isn't that cute? So let's put our card together. We're gonna adhere this one to the front. And I'm gonna open it up to make sure I've got good borders. So this is my coming back, very easy card. Um, I'll be back on YouTube live on Monday at three and back to my normal schedule hopefully for a while now we're going to put our celebrate right there let me grab my dimensionals here we go so i think i'll put either four or five i don't like a squishy sentiment so i probably way overused dimensionals but they're inexpensive and i don't like a squishy sentiment so so tell me, what have you been working on? I have really missed going live and visiting with you every week. Okay, ta-da. Oh, well, no, not quite to the ta-da part yet because I forgot to add the bling and the twine. This twine is also, it's the essentials pack um, and you'll find it in the annual catalog. I have my, my new twine is coming in my order. I've been behind in ordering, so um, some things are a little late and it's not, it's not Stampin' Up's fault. It's I was a little late in getting things placed. Okay, orders placed. And I'm gonna pop that just with a glue dot down there at the bottom of that sentiment piece. And then we're gonna add some bling. So I am still using up bling from the previous catalog. I think that's the best advice I can give everybody who's watching um, is use what you have. Um, just use, use up your products that you bought them and you should enjoy them. 
and it doesn't really matter if it's the latest and greatest. Um, just use what you have. Okay, so I'm going to be finishing up some of these opaque adhesive back gems, and I'm going to use the white ones here. I have a lot of these. I think I lost them in my craft area somewhere and just never got around to using them. So you'll be seeing some of these retired things. Oh, let's put this one right there. Oh, that's cute. And then let's go one more. You know, I like everything in threes. Let's put this one here. Okay, so this is today's card. I'm not gonna finish off the inside, but um, I will show you how I did it on these other two. So this is, scooch my mess off here to the side. So this is today's card. You can see any designer series paper you have will work. If you want to make a Father's Day card, grab one of your Father's Day kits. That fishing one is absolutely adorable and I love it. It's classic. Um, sorry, I, the name's not coming to my head if somebody knows it uh, or I'll add it later. Um, is absolutely great. You could use this pattern, use the same. Um, you could use a die to cut out your centerpiece. Um, this layout is absolutely perfect. And this is the one using the four. And then this is casing the catalog. Sorry, this inside piece keeps wanting to pop out. Um, let me know which one is your favorite, what color you like, which layout you like. Anyway, I know which one's my favorite, so I'm excited to hear which one's yours. Anyway, as always, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. So happy to be back, and hopefully I'll see you Monday on YouTube. And if you're not a YouTube person, I'll be back next Thursday at 9. Take care.